Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today, we're going to talk about another bolo item. It's going to be hood ornaments today. A lot of people miss these because they don't realize they're hood ornaments. Sometimes they're like moto meters and things along that line, or even on radiator caps that actually have a hood ornament mounted to it too, depending on the age, of course. But we're going to go to the screen and we're going to talk about hood ornaments right now. So these are hood ornaments. A lot of people will miss these. They won't realize that's actually what they are. They're not in a car. They're just some random item that you run into. And they come in all kinds of different shapes, styles, sizes. Some have lighting to them. Some have Bakelite and Lucite um, lenses on them and actually light up as well. There's a bunch of different kinds. Some are aftermarket, so they wouldn't have been issued with the car, but you could have bought them out of a catalog or something. The the, the hot rod rodders, the rat rodders and all of these, they love these aftermarket ones too. My father did hot rodding and things like that too, so I've seen a ton of these in the past. I've been in many vintage cars that he either fixed up or had. We used to go to car shows, so I've always liked this area myself. This one's one of the monster high dollar ones. Um, it's literally a mascot kind of thing here. So this one went to a Pontiac. Most of the Pontiac, the the Native American ones with the, the Indian chief on it go for a ton of money. It doesn't have to be official. In many cases, the aftermarket ones can sell for as much, if not much more, than an official one. So this one went for $2,554.86 plus 20 on shipping. Here's a Stutz hood ornament. Stutz Bearcat was one of the, the models that the car uh, made. It's been featured in some old movies. If I'm not mistaken, the movie The Great Race with Tony Curtis, I think there's a Stutz Bearcat uh, as one of the cars in that race, if I'm not mistaken. $1,275 bucks for this one here. It's kind of like a mix of an Egyptian Roman Mercury figure here. There's even comic book characters, which I'll show you in a minute here. There's military ones. Um, the Native American ones, though, by far, are, seem to go the best. This one here is a 1930-31 radiator cap that someone has actually mounted to a base for display. The high-end pieces, a lot of times, I will see them like this. Uh, for me, I have to be able to see the item off of the stand, so if it's permanently mounted, I wouldn't mess with it, just because I couldn't verify the authenticity. If it was really cheap enough, maybe I would, but I'm not going to sink much money into something I can't verify the authenticity of. If it's just setting on there, just that's fine with me, but... The ones that are mounted, sometimes I've run into some that were screwed in and you couldn't take them off without buying it. So I just wasn't going to take the risk for a couple of hundred bucks. This one's $1,554. Now, this is an aftermarket one. Um, some of them actually moved and did an action. This spins. Nowadays, they even have spinners for your hubcaps nowadays. This is a similar style as what you see here, or the idea anyway. This is from 1931. It would have went on a Cadillac. Uh, rather interesting, $1,175. It's well marked, that other one, too, so there's no doubt that's what it was. The Indian Maiden, any of these Indian ones go for a ton of money. Any of them, 1000 bucks, $1,012, if you want to be exact. You can see how they mount down. It just screws on through here. Um, most of the time, you can tell by the markings on it if it's a legit piece. Some of these, they are, are aftermarket ones that were made, um, and they look just like it. They're just aftermarket ones, though, but... Let's move on to the next one here. Now, these pickup ones here, I find these occasionally. Flea markets, I think, are the best place for this. Auctions come into play sometimes, even garage sales. I look at everything in a garage if there's a garage sale. Anything on the walls, anything's fair game. They might not sell it, but I'm going to make them an offer on something if I see something like this. Uh, it's, it's a real nice one. This is a re-chromed version, so it's been uh, triple-plated, basically, on this one here. So you can tell just how nice it is and looks. Some of these I'm a little uh, worrisome on buying re-chromed ones, but this one wouldn't be one of them. Just because if someone bought it to use, chances are they'd need to re-chrome it anyway. You send these things off. It costs a couple hundred bucks to do the average one from what I've seen. So maybe somebody else has a better source, but the last time I looked it was like 175 for one item. You could send off more and it would be less per item if you had a whole bunch to send off at once, of course. Uh, now this one here is a Rolls Royce. This one I've had before. Most people don't realize this is a Rolls Royce. Unless you've seen a Rolls Royce up close or something, I guess a lot of people just miss it from my personal opinion. It's a nice looking piece. Um, you know, they are usually numbered and dated and things like that on some of them. 995. Uh, another one to always look for. I don't think I actually have one in here. I like Mack truck ones. 
a Mack truck, the Bulldog. I usually pay five or ten bucks for them, and I usually can flip them for say thirty-five to say forty-five, fifty buck range on that one. Now here's a Felix the Cat. This is the original era Felix the Cat, or at least its design is somewhat resemble Felix the Cat. Uh, it's rather interesting, but I think this one has a signature. Yeah, the signature on the bottom is what's key to this one here, Austria. Now, I've had pieces um, by the same exact company on many other items. So this mark I look for, you know, on pretty much anything that's similar style to this anyway. So just something to look for. $979. Next one, another one of the Pontiac ones. This is the Deco version. It has like the halo-ish circle around it. Um, again, these are just really neat items. I've always loved these. 1934 Pontiac, 950 bucks. You know, if you don't know what that is, chances are you might not know it's a hood ornament and think it's worth something, you know, a ton of money. You might see it for 75 bucks. The person selling it might not know what it is. And then, you know, if you do, you're, you're set on something like that. You know, at 75 bucks... Uh, now, this is just a, a fab piece here. This is another one of those aftermarket ones. Um, I think it's marked, too, if I'm not mistaken. I have seen this one before. You can tell the age on some of these by the huge um, mount-down piece you see on the back there. So These would have went on the cars with the ear with the real long hoods. Um, these things just stood out. It was a, a wealthy person that would even be able to buy these. A uh, thousand bucks, $1,044 on this one here. Here's a Studebaker, uh, Studebaker president. Now, Studebaker Lark, and there's other Studebakers as well, too. My father had a Studebaker at one time, so, you know, I'm well familiar with the company and the company name and all. Here's an interesting one either way. Um, these caps like this, this is a radiator cap. At a certain point, they weren't on the hood. They turned into, like, a radiator cap slash hood ornament. So it just depends on the car itself. It's the same thing, basically. This just actually had a practical purpose as well as, you know, a artistic purpose for it. $898. Here's another one, Packard Goddess of Speed Super 8. Now, the Super 8 was a, you know, like the, the best version of that year from what I remember on it. I'm not a big, huge car buff, per se, on specifics. You know, I like the vintage cars. I always liked the ZZ Top car, you know, for a perfect example of the era 1920s and 30s. This is rather interesting to me, too. Uh, she's holding a wheel. It's Art Deco beyond belief. Look at the base. I mean, it's flowing um, across there. It's just typical of that era. Just really nice piece, honestly. Eight ninety two. Now people will have a shelves of these that you know fifty, sixty of them or a hundred of them lined up on a shelf, and just have them in their office and things like that too, because they're really nice looking pieces. Sometimes you can find the actual figurehead off of the cap too so just keep that in mind when you see nothing it's just a, a statuary it might be a hood ornament that's just missing the actual base they would cut them off or something just for artistic wise this is a name a name brand kinsberger which we just saw as well anything that says that on it i would buy i don't care if it's a hood ornament or not most of the brass and the early items with that maker's mark on it are worth a real good chunk of change from what i've seen that was basically a thousand. Here's fifteen hundred dollars. Another hood ornament. I don't think this one was redone. Uh, it does not look like it. It looks like it's got a little wear here and there. Let's see if we can maybe zoom in just a hair. Yeah, it's still in original condition. Now some of this will buff out. You can see some wear down through the plating, the chrome plating on there. This one, chances are the person's going to send it off. Would be my guess. If they're spending that kind of money on it, they're going to send it off. This is an aftermarket one. There was a lot of these made again for the hot rodders and rat rodders and the racers and things like that back in the day. So I look for anything like this. If it's something that's mounted down to a car made of chrome or a motorcycle, I'm going to snap it up real quick here if it's cheap. Fifteen fifty-four. Now, here's an illuminated one. Uh, it actually lit up at the end. These were just awesome. I really liked them. If you haven't seen one in person, it's pretty cool in my opinion. It's rather interesting here. It looks almost minty like it probably wasn't. Yeah, this one probably wasn't issued. Now, that does happen. You'll see them show up like this. I have another one in here as well, too, the lighted versions. I've always liked these. I thought it was really neat. Even the aftermarket ones with, like, the skulls and things that they made for cars. Here's just another one, Pierce, yeah, Pierce Arrow Archer. This one's a known hood ornament. It's well collected again. These go for a ton of money. You can see the markings on the bottom. Hood ornaments in general, I'll snap up anytime I can find them. It's just a, a given. 706 bucks. You're going to spend some money on these even at an auction, just to give you a, a warning on that. 
Here's just another example of how they mount it to it looks like. I believe that is mounted down there from what I would gather. I've seen them mounted this way or similar ways. He's showing it off in the book too so you can see that that's a legit piece. Oh no, it's just setting on there. There will be mounts on most of these, um, you know, wood mounts or something I've seen on many, many of these. It mostly looks like a statuary piece at that point, too. Uh, Greyhound Hornament from a Ford Lincoln, 650 bucks. Here's another version of that. Um, it's almost identical, but I think this one's a wider head, and it's a little bigger of a profile. There's five, six, seven different types, depending on the year that these were out. In fact, he's got the box still. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. In all honesty, that's really cool. $700 on that one there. You can just see why that would be uh, collectible. I'd almost hate to use it on a car just because it's so new and, and pristine. You probably won't find another one, honestly. Here's another Oakland Eagle. Um, now, I don't know much about this one here, but there's so many other varieties of cars. Oakland, Ario Speedwagon, um, you know, the group even. It's a car. There's an Ario. It's a company. You know, and a speed wagon was actually a, a version of the car. 649 on this one here. Most of the animals sell for a bunch of money. Now, this is a moto meter. Would have went up on the top of the cars. These are earlier devices here. Didn't need them, didn't make them after a certain point. So anything like this, I would nab up. They're really neat pieces. You can usually tell by the ornamentation. Without ornamentation, it could just be some kind of gauge or something. But with the ornamentation and the construction of the piece, you can usually tell the difference on these once you've seen a few of them. This one's 620. Now, here's a, a well-known and well-collected. I think this is um, Barnes Father. Yeah, this is an um, interesting one here, too. He's supposed to be like a British soldier. I've seen three or four of these in, in my day. Um, never been lucky enough to get them, or they were too high priced for what I would get out of them. This goes for like four hundred to say seven or eight hundred dollars max on these. This someone has cleaned this one up too, from what I see on it. Wouldn't have that that look of a finish. It was probably black when they found it, just dark and dirty and dingy. I can see the the interest in cleaning these up, but I don't usually clean these honestly. I'll just lightly clean them. I won't take off the finish that that bad. But again, somebody may have clean may clean it when they buy it, and not even care. I personally just don't. Don't do that. I don't like to remove the patina off of something. Uh, GMC pickup truck. It, most of the truck ones go for some good money, especially these earlier ones. This is a cap. Yeah, this is a cap, I was going to say. And they've actually mounted something on the bottom, it looks like, of it. Yeah, just to, uh, you know, for stand-wise. It's a rather interesting piece either way. Uh, you know what it is, at least I would, the GMC, just that logo. I find letterheads and postcards even sometimes, advertising ones with that logo on it. So I look for stuff like that. Here's an interesting one, Charles Lindbergh. There was a ton of these. Again, these are aftermarket. You could buy them as a uh, radiator cap, a, a, a moto um, meter, or a just a hood ornament. And it would just mount down, and there'd be different versions of it. You could just depends on the mount holes for your hood. Uh, this one has some issues to it. It's been outside. This is like a pot metal, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken. There's five or six different uh, Lindbergh ones that I have seen. There's one with him standing up even that I saw once before, too. So 250 Condition might have had a little something to do with this one not going for a ton of money. Here's another one of the Pontiac ones. Now, this one I don't think lit up, but it has a fin, basically a, a plastic loose side or Bakelite fin running across the back of it. Either way, rather interesting. This one's in really nice condition. This could have been NOS um, never used. It's well, it's hard to say on this one here. It was well kept if it if it wasn't. Uh, Four hundred and fifty on that one. Now, the other thing that most people think of is it's only the vintage ones that go for some money. So I wanted to pull up a few just to show you seventies and eighties cars. The hood ornaments go for some pretty good money too. This is a new old stock eighty six through ninety Chevy Caprice Classic. The Caprices, and most of those hood ornaments sell really quick. Um, I know some people think, let's go to the junkyards. The junkyards know this stuff by heart. They know it. They've been into this field for longer than, you know, you or I. Back when I was a kid or even 20 years ago, when we used to do eBay, you could go to a junkyard and pull off like the Mustang um, grill uh, logos off of like the 60s cars and the 70s and flip those really easy because most people didn't think of that. So, you know, even if you paid top dollar from the junkyard, you could still flip them for a horrendous profit. Nowadays, you just can't do that for the most part. Most of these are yanked off um, by the actual junkyard because they there's like a spring mechanism in some of them too where this top part would flap back and forth so it wouldn't break too. And, you know, sometimes those are damaged and things like that as well too. They'll take them off. 
$339 for that one. So, you know, I, I don't care the age. And here's another new one. And this one has wear. It's got some dings. It's got some pitting. 120 bucks basically on this one here. So I don't worry about the age. Any of the 70s, even up into the 80s, I will buy. 5, 10, 15 bucks I'll take a chance on. Just like the Ram trucks. Any of the vintage Ram ones, um, people buy them up now. And this is from 81 through 93. This is still 120 bucks. You know, people will put them on cars that they don't belong on. Who, who cares what car they came from? They're looking for the looks of it. So I don't mind buying these new ones, even in bulk quantity, even if I have to spend some money. Here's just another example. 120 bucks on this one again. 78, 79, and 80 Cutlass Supreme Hood again. Uh, put up a higher price and you're going to get more for it. This one was a buy it now, I believe, for the 119. I'd put it up for a high and, you know, then go down from there. I wouldn't just put it at 120 and go because, you know, the 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 cruisers, the, the folks who like cruising in these cars will pay the money for these, you know. And the last one here is a Ford Galaxy. I've been in a 59 Ford Galaxy. My cousin had one with a 500 engine in it thing just moved like a storm even for the size of the car this is new old stock you, you can see what it is 650 on this one here i've talked about it we're in an area where car parts show up you know i'm on gated in amazon to sell car parts too i can sell historical items like this as well too so i always look for car parts probably a couple times a month some factory uh, NOS items will show up here. I'm just outside the Motor City. You know, we're not too far away. So for me, this is a huge area. Something that, you know, I'm able sometimes to buy hundreds of items on a wholesale purchase from a warehouse that's closing up or that's been setting an inventory that they hadn't seen in 20, 30, 40 years, believe it or not. Sometimes they'll have a storage building and the attic's full of stuff that they haven't touched and, you know, they're moving or something. That's usually when I find stuff like this in quantity anyway. And then I'm buying it from a wholesaler, so I have an invoice for the items that I purchase in quantity, so at least usually I do. It just depends. Even if you don't have an invoice and you don't want to mess with these on Amazon, eBay all day long. So well, there you go. There are some more items that we look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts on it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.